In this video, we're taking a look at equations for circles and ellipses in parametric form. And I've already plotted these things using some plotting software. My first one is x of t equals cosine t, y of t equals sine t, which you may recognize as a description of the unit circle. If I call the angle t and the radius 1, then the x-coordinate of this point that I've highlighted is actually the definition of cosine t. And the y-coordinate is the definition of sine t. So we're really just describing the points on the unit circle and tracing those out as the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi. I'm asked to determine the direction of the parametric curve by plugging in some points. So I'm going to start at t equals 0. And if I show the algebra explicitly down here, x of 0 is cosine of 0, which is 1. And y of 0 is sine of 0 which is 0, and I get the point 1, 0, corresponding to t equals 0. The next really special point that I'd like to plug in is pi over 2. x of pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2, but that's 0. y of pi over 2 is the sine of pi over 2, but that's 1. And I end up with the point 0, 1, which should be a familiar result. So that happens when the angle t is pi over 2. Um, I could proceed this way and find that when I plug in t equals pi, I end up over here on the left at the point negative 1, 0. And when I plug in t equals 3 pi over 2, I end up at the bottom at the point 0, negative 1. And finally, when I get to t equals 2 pi, I'm back where I started. So we've determined a directionality here. This curve is being traced out counterclockwise as t increases. All right, let's do a comparison to the equations in part B. I'm given x of t equals 3 cosine t, y of t equals 2 sine t. Well, all I've done here is stretch out the maximum and minimum possible values for x. Instead of maxing out at 1 and having a minimum of negative 1, it now goes from negative 3 to 3. And then y, I stretched out to plus or minus 2. Aside from that, it's really just as simple as plotting a circle. So again, if I plug in some points explicitly, x of 0 is 3 cosine of 0, which is 3. y of 0 is 2 sine of 0, which is 0. And I end up with the point 3, 0 happening at t equals 0. All I need is one more point nearby in order to determine the direction. So I'm going to use pi over 2. x of pi over 2 is 0 because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 and y of pi over 2 is 2 because the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And I end up at the top of the ellipse when t is equal to pi over 2. So I know this thing is being drawn this way, again counterclockwise. And from now on when I see a set of parametric equations like this, I just think of it as basically being a circle, but these coefficients are giving you the min and max values of x and y, so you can immediately plot this sort of distorted circle or ellipse by plotting these four key points, the min and max values of x and y. Now the final part of the question is that I'm asked to eliminate the parameter to retrieve the standard equation for each curve in rectangular coordinates. And there's a very standard trick for this. We're going to use the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I look at my circle, I can immediately say x squared plus y squared is cosine squared t plus sine squared t. But that's equal to 1, that Pythagorean identity. So I get, again, the equation for the unit circle. The ellipse requires a slight modification. I'm going to prep by saying x over 3 is cosine t and y over 2 is sine t. Now I'm ready to square these things, and I can use the same identity. x over 3 squared plus y over 2 quantity squared is equal to cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which is equal to 1. In other words, I guess I could write it like this. x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And hopefully you recognize that as the equation of an ellipse with a semi-major axis of 3 and a semi-minor axis of 2.